The cart, the, the cart turns back to a pumpkin at 12 o'clock tomorrow night. Amen. I'm so glad. But all, all week long, this whole week, last couple of weeks, but especially this week, it's all been about sanctification and sanctification and sanctification. And, and there's so many people that, 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 that have the wrong idea about sanctification, how you're sanctified before God. And, and I've seen it over the years. I've seen some stuff that actually, I, I hated it. It made me sick of my stomach. Some of the things that people were hurt because of the way they, they confused uh, sanctification with legalism and it's so much a different thing. If you are sanctified, here's what's going to happen. You're going to love God with your heart so much, you're going to want to reflect Him. And you're going to want to do things that please Him. Amen? So, the same way, God doesn't care where you're at, He'll come get you. He's not scared to step in wherever you're at and get you. And so that's what this song is about. He will step in wherever you're at, whatever circumstance you're in today, He will step in and He will get you. So I want everybody to stand up and we're going to sing that chorus again. Go ahead.
And so today's candle. Oh, wrong one. Got to do a purple one. Today's candle is a candle for love and faith. Everybody happy? Yeah. Then let your face know it. Yeah. Praise God. Y'all want y'all stand in line for roots now. Come on. There you go. Now, now <laughs> I had talked about this subject before. I was looking at I was, I was going over Christmas. And, and again, I, I, I just can't help it because I just come through all this training in psychology and in counseling. And did semesters of a lot of grief counseling semesters of grief counseling and, uh, or preparation for grief counseling and how, how grief counseling works and all this stuff. And, and so I, I just can't help it. It's in me. And I promise you it's not fluffing stuff. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. But as I was looking for this morning's sermon, again, I just wanted something very light because it's been so, it's been so intense the last three weeks about being crucified. I, went, I said, Lord, can we do something a little light? Show me something a little light. And he wouldn't let this come off my mind, so I can promise you this might not be so light. <laughs> and we talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it in a different way, from a different viewpoint. Uh, the miserable <laughs> Christmas and the miserable blessing. Christmas <laughs> and the miserable blessing. Let me, let me <laughs> before we get started, you know, someone... Someone asked a group of Jewish merchants what they do on Christmas Day to celebrate because you know, they don't believe that, that their Messiah has been born yet. So they asked this group of Jewish merchants what they do on Christmas Day to celebrate. They said they go to their shops and count the cash register and sing what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good book. That was from the new book. That's good. <laughs> All right, get your Bibles out. Stand for the reading of the Word. Hopefully we'll finish this up tomorrow, next week, not tomorrow, though, next week. Amen. Y'all please pray for me. I've got a 10-page plus essay due tomorrow and plus a bibliography and an outline and a title page. And all I've got so far is an outline, a title page, and a bibliography. <laughs> Been kind of busy. All right. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abai, or Abai, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God, in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. God's timing is impeccable. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the same at, at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And, there's, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children, and to disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the Lord, Whereby shall I know this? For my old man... And my wife, well stricken in years, and an angel answering and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God, and I am sent speaking to thee to show these great 
tithers. We're going to stop it right there. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace, your mercy. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. I thank you for what you're doing in our midst. I thank you, God, that, that you've got this. We trust you. You've got this. And I ask you right now, Father, to minister to each one of us in a very powerful way today, God. And help us, Lord, each one of us, get exactly what you have preordained for us to receive this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Just about the way down, the past is behind us, the future is ahead of us, God is with us, and nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Now let me just take this a little further now, because that's not miserable. That, does that sound miserable at all? I mean, here's somebody that's barren, and now all of a sudden they're going to have a baby. Does that sound miserable? No. Here, that, here we go. Ready? We're going to talk about these guys today, and we're going to talk about Mary and Joseph next week. All right? Here it goes. And behold, thou shalt be... <laughs> Look, he said, how do I know that you're going to do all the stuff you said you're going to do? Y'all say, here come the misery. Here comes the misery. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, speechless, unable to utter a sound. You will not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled and it, that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his, of, of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid. Y'all say hid. Hid. Herself. Five months. Hid. Herself. It says, Thus the Lord dealt with me in the days where he looked on me and take away my reproach among men, and she hid for five months. Y'all say, Here comes the misery again. Here comes the misery. <laughs> All right. I'm glad y'all are doing good. Amen. So here we go. Get ready. In God good. All the time. All the time. All right. The miserable. Miserable blessing. I, I've seen the time I know God was blessing. I know he was blessing. And in the middle of the blessing, I was absolutely miserable. Amen. Anybody can say that? Amen. I know God's blessing. I see his hand. I know he's working. Why am I so miserable? Here we go. We're going to talk about that a little bit right now. Get ready. The, the prosperity message that we hear this day, the message of prosperity has not only softened the gospel message. Listen carefully. Now, there's nothing wrong with prosperity. God wants to prosper us. He prospers us for a reason. He prospers us to be a blessing. Think about that. Whenever God prospers us and He wants to prosper us, He really does. And He gives promises that if we'll give unto Him, He'll give unto us and all this. Well, so, so God promises prosperity, but not with the slant that some of these guys on TV have got toward God. So, so the message of prosperity has not only softened the gospel message, it has softened many pilgrims. They don't know how to fight. They, they don't know how to, 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 to get in there and get their hands dirty and to get their feet wet. They don't know how to just jump in and do something. You know, I, I was with the guys at B5 not long ago, and the guys, I mean, that's the rough guys. Some of those guys are really, really rough guys. And, and, and like I said, tattoos on their face. And, and they're in there for some of the wildest, roughest stuff. And, and one of the guys even asked me, he says, why would you take time to help guys like us? And I said, this, did you see anything here about Jesus leaving the 99 to find the one? And he said, yes. I said, you're the one. I said, God loves you. And he said all kinds of things. Not just me, he said all kinds of things your way. And if you will take him, it's amazing what will happen for you. So look, look, but again, when we go into the prison, I can promise you, we don't go in there and ride cars, little bitty 
little bitty putt with meals. He ride all through, and everybody's throwing flowers at us. And everybody's glad to see us. We go in there, and we get cussed, and we have to sometimes walk through urine and some of the stuff we have to smell. And you go in there, and some of those guys have got feces on their face. I mean, it's just some rough stuff. And, and so, again, I'm so glad that I haven't been so softened that I can't jump into there and take care of business. I'm here to tell you, too many of us, we've got to ask God, help us toughen us up. So watch this. This mindset is crippled to the church. We want to be an overcomer, but we don't want the challenge of overcoming. God just opened my head and poured in. That's not how God works. So look at somebody tell me that's not how God works. If you want to be an overcomer, then you better get ready for the challenges that are coming. We want the spoils of victory without the scars of battle. That's not how it works. You show me somebody with scars, I'll show you a victor. You show me somebody that's been through something, I'll show you a victor. You show me somebody that many times didn't know if they were going to make it through the next trial, and now they're standing, now I'll show you a victor. Because they know what it's like. They carry the scars, they face the challenges, and they've come up. And that's what God wants his people to be like. He wants his people to know that they know. You know, it's never been God's plan for that mindset to creep in that you don't have to go through anything to get something. So, so again, now this is just all the preliminaries. We're getting ready to, we're getting ready to talk uh, about everything. Get ready. You see, 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 let me just, just bear with me for a minute. God is raising up a mighty army. Y'all know that? Not afraid to face the challenges, not afraid to collect scars, to stand in this last generation and declare, we will not go silently in the night. Amen? God's looking for somebody that's willing, I'm telling you, willing to get their hands dirty, willing to, to get their feet wet, willing to get on their belly if they have to and crawl through the mud and crawl under the, the wire, so to speak, and get people and bring them in and minister to them. So, so, so again, watch this. So, so, it's easy to lose sight of real blessings. Why? Get ready. Real blessings don't always come without struggle. Real blessings don't always come without pain. Real blessings don't always come with answers. I've been pastoring now 30 years. And I know I don't look that old. I started pastoring when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pastoring 30 years and I've sat at bedsides and I've sat in funeral homes and I've sat in hospitals and I've sat in jails and I've sat in homes and had no answer none but all I can say is we're going to embrace God in this struggle. We're going to hold his hand in spite of the pain. We're going to hold on to him even though we don't even see what he is doing. You see, often, often, when things happen to you, at least you ask him, if I'm so blessed, God, why am I so miserable? Y'all ask somebody that. If I'm so blessed, why am I so miserable? Ask somebody. <laughs> Ask somebody else. Be careful. Don't say, why are you making me miserable? Say, why am I miserable? Yeah, Y'all get in here. All of a sudden, we got to do marriage counseling when we get out of this place. <laughs> You're the reason I'm so miserable. <laughs> All right. Watch this. Tribulation, distress, misery. Y'all say that. Tribulation, distress, misery. Tribulation, distress, misery. One more time. Tribulation, distress, misery. Now we're going to talk about this. Look. Whenever there's a blessing, there has to come a building. Whenever there's a building, there's always a struggle. Whenever there's a struggle, there's misery, which is temporary. And after the misery comes the blessings. So this is what it says. Here's the scripture. 2 Corinthians 
Corinthians 4, 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Let me just stop there for a minute. This is Paul writing. Paul has been beat so many times. He's got scars all over his body where he's been beat with 40 lashes or more than 40 lashes. He's been beat with rods. He's been in shipwreck. He's been out of the deep and not even know if he's going to make it back into shore. He has been in prison so much that he's losing his eyesight. And he's talking about this. He says, but our light affliction. He called what he went through light affliction. There was light affliction in the Greek means literally a small push. Small push. He says, all this stuff I've been through is a small push. But I gotta know this, I want y'all to know this, that although there's a small push, it's only for a moment. Because what it's doing is it's working for something greater in the eternal weight of glory. So watch this. That word affliction means tribulation, distress, misery. I got looked into that and I said, tribulation, distress, and misery. And then it hit me. Tribulation is outward pressure. Distress is inward pressure. When your outward pressure causes that inward pressure, or when that inward pressure causes the outward pressure, whenever the inward and the outward collide, guess what you get? Misery. Think about it. Whenever the outward pressure meets the inward pressure, the collision point is misery. Some of us in here, we know what it's like. I, I did a funeral Friday, and I did a funeral, funeral yesterday. And, 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 and it hurts because I sit there and I watch the families and they're really poor up and they're really broke up. And, 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 and I got to do my best not to, to allow myself to get caught up in, in the moment and start crying myself. So I just have to sit there and sometimes I just quietly brush a tear away from my eye or just quietly just look down like I'm looking at my book. And, and I say, hold it together, big boy. Hold it together. And, and, and so, so, so I watched yesterday and I, and I saw these people that had the outward pressure. And the outward pressure, both people that were buried were Christians. Both people were buried were ready to go. They were wanting to go. But even though they were ready to go and wanted to go, I could see the outward pressure in the service, in their death. And I could see the inward pressure because now they're stressed out. And although they were glad God had their loved one, they were still what? Miserable. When Bethany died, I was so glad that she no longer had to suffer. But there was the outward pressure. There was the inward pressure. And for months, even though I knew she was with God, and I thanked God for that, guess what? I was miserable. Amen. So, just to watch Tribulation, say tribulation, outward pressure. Tribulation, outward pressure. Distress, say it, inward pressure. When they collide, it's misery. So people wonder, why am I so miserable? If God is blessing, why am I so miserable? Because blessings do not come, always come easy. It's not like going down Walmart. Can you imagine somebody giving you a Walmart card and say there's no limit on it? You don't have to pay it back. There's no limit on it. I'm going to give you two hours to walk through Walmart and get whatever you want. Put on that card and forget it. How many can do some really good shopping in two hours? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even forget the grocery section. I go right over to the sporting goods. And I go right on over to, the, to the, where the car stuff is and all that. I can do a lot of damage in two hours if you gave me a card and said there's no limit. And you don't have to pay it back. Good Lord have mercy. Some of us treat God's blessing the same way. It's like a spending spree at Walmart. That's not how it works. Many times God's blessings do surprise you. And they are awesome. And they bring relief. But mainly, mostly, when God is working in your life, there's going to be misery. Daddy, Daddy's 78 years old. Uh, they, they, changed, they looked at it when they went to go put change his hip they, they measured his leg he'd been limping for quite some time with arthritis in his hip 
He'd been living for quite some time. When the doctor put him on the table, he found out that his one leg was over an inch shorter than the other leg from the arthritis. That's why daddy had been living. And so they put the hip in and put his legs at the right length. And I talked to him this morning. This has been several weeks now. I talked to him this morning. And he said, son, he says, that one pain I had is gone. He said, but the pain that was created <laughs> is still there. And it's powerful. He said, son, I can't even walk out to the car. He said, I'm trying, I'm walking, I'm doing what I can. And the doctor told me, he said, he could be sore to all in from the new hip. He said, but you know how I put that hip in? I said, how'd you put it in, doc? He said, I took a mallet and beat it in. Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> After he said that, I looked back to my seat. <laughs> and he showed me the pictures. You know, hey, daddy is blessed now. He no longer has one leg longer than the other. He no longer has that arthritis in that hip. But he told me this morning he's miserable. Sometimes in the middle of the blessing, misery comes and you think there's something wrong with you. You think if you've done something wrong, you didn't say it quite right, you weren't doing things right, because God, if I did it right, I wouldn't be miserable. Let me just tell you something. You can cross every I, or cross every T, dot every I, you can do it all right, and it's still at times you're going to be miserable, but that's okay. Because remember, I told my dad, he said, that son, he said, I heard this hurts. I said, well, it will hurt. I said, I'll tell you what, the pain of healing is going to far outweigh the pain of hurting, of the disease. And the pain of the disease progresses. The pain of the healing will go away. So, Misery is for a short while, and then it's going to be awesome. Guess what? You're not always going to be miserable. Get ready. Here's an anatomy of a blessing. Ready? Here we go. Abraham, the promise. Abraham was promised a seed. Took time. Took 20 years, actually. The test was Sarah was barren. So how are you going to be the father of many nations, if your wife can't have any children. Makes no sense. Some of you here right now, God's giving you promises. You know God promised you something. But you don't understand it because you're not seeing how it can work out. Because he's told you a promise that makes no sense. And because of that, Abraham in the middle of his blessings was miserable. And his wife even tried to help him figure out how to make it happen with Hagar. That didn't work out. Matter of fact, Sarah just got jealous of Hagar and that didn't work at all. And the terrorist thing we're going to go on now is all because of all that. So, you know, I'm really, I, I really not too happy with how that turned out myself. But the testimony, when the time was right, and he quit trying to do it himself. He quit trying to make the blessing happen in his own power, his own reconnaissance, in his own strength. Then guess what happened? He had Isaac. And the seed started. So watch this. Not, it's not a matter of earning the blessing, but a matter of letting God build you to be able to handle the blessing. Here's where the misery comes in. There's some guys on television right now. If they saw this, they'd burn this, they'd burn this sermon. They'd burn it. Ban me from ever coming to their church. Watch this. One more time. When God blesses you, it's not a matter of earning the blessing. It's a matter of letting go and let God build you to be able to handle the blessing. Some of y'all got so many blessings coming, but they're not here now because you can't handle them. If God blessed you with the blessing now, then of course you would blow it because you try to figure it out on your own. You try to do it on your own in your own strength. And so as you try to do it on your own, you find yourself in worse trouble than you were before you got the blessing. And so the blessing becomes a curse. So God builds us in His wisdom and in His grace and in His mercy. He builds us up to handle the 
the blessing that he's bringing to us. So remember, every blessing you get, if it's a true blessing of God, it'll glorify God. Get ready. We're going to read this again. I want us to look at this. Read it one more time. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias in the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and his name, her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, the Lord blameless. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he came into the temple of the Lord, and the whole most of the people were praying outside at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered unto him, O uh, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of the Lord, or God. I am sent to speak to thee and show thee these glad tidings. And thou shalt be, be dumb, not able to speak, until the day that these things be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, The Lord has dealt with me in these days, where he looked on me and took away my reproach from men. So here we go. Get ready. Here's the people so far we're going to talk about and their miserable blessing. First, now here we go. I should have gotten it. I'm sorry. I didn't go ahead of myself. All right, now, stop that. Okay. Something happened to the, I got a miserable blessing coming here. Hold on. This is what happens when the Lord talks to you just before time to leave the house. And you start putting things together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold on, people. God is still in charge. Amen. All the time. All the time, even though even though I, I sometimes think I am. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, sometimes I think I am. Here we go. Hold on, we're gonna get there. There's more than one way to baptize a heathen. I don't want to mess this up more than I already have. Now I'm miserable. <laughs> In God again. Okay. Hold on, we're just about there. Here we go. Here we go. This is all part of all this electronic stuff that you learn or think you learn and you don't. Ready? Okay. Now. God starts speaking to us, if we're not careful, we doubt what he says, 
we can become miserable. Secondly, Zacharias, because he didn't believe the message, was stricken dumb. So now not only is he miserable on the inside, he's miserable on the outside. Elizabeth was happy, but she was hiding. So she's miserable. It never speaks of the baby moving until Mary arrives six months later. So again, she's miserable. Everything changed when John was born. The promise was kept, and he did his part. He named him John. So now, here we go. What do I do? Of course, that's in the way again, but that's all right. What do I do when I have the miserable blessing? Number one, remember this, he is still in charge. Don't say it, God's still in charge. Remember this, say this again. He has your best interest. Sorry, he's got my best interest in heart. Say that. And his timing is always perfect. Somebody say that. His timing is always perfect. Zacharias and Elizabeth, watch this. There it goes again. Well, praise God. Why don't you just keep on going here, boy? There you go. Here we go. I was out the door. Now look, I was, I was programming as I was leaving to go out the door. <laughs> praise God. Help me, God. I'm so miserable. Y'all say that. Help me, God. I'm so miserable. Here we go. Now we got it. Here we go. Know this, that God is still in charge, that he has your best interest at heart, and his timing is always perfect. Here we go. Remember this. And this is something I said at all, both of the funerals in the last two days. When you can't see his plan, when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. When you can't see his plan, when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. Everybody stand. Y'all come on up here and play something. Time to get real. I mean, right down to the ground, real. Every eye closed, every head bowed, every nobody looking around at anybody. How many raise their hand and say, Pastor, I, that's me. I'm blessed, but I'm miserable. Would you put that hand up? I'm blessed, but I'm miserable. It's not a sin to be miserable. Remember, your outer pressure and your inner pressure has collided. Even in the middle of your blessing, you can be miserable. Here was John, we talked about this story, and we, we just kind of passed over the part where he was just done for for a few months and then everything's fine and everything's, no, that's not how it was. He's trying to execute the office of priest. He's trying to do his thing and he can't even talk. His wife is so excited about having a baby but even then, she hid herself five months because she didn't want people to see it. Her blessing. She hid her blessing because she was miserable. God understands. He sees it. He knows. He understands. The 
that it's possible to be blessed and stressed at the same time. It's possible to be blessed and have so much pressure you can barely breathe. If you got a roof over your head, you got food in your stomach, you got a vehicle to drive, you're blessed. But that still doesn't mean you're not stressed. It doesn't mean that you're not full of pressure. So I'm going to ask one more time. And just be honest because you're, when you do this, you're, you're actually reaching up to God. And you're starting that blessing all over again inside of you. Not the miserable. What I'm talking about now, you're, you're getting some relief. If you're here today, you're blessed, but you're miserable. One more time, we just put that hand up. God sees those hands. And God's going to do something for you. You hold on. You got to remember, God's still in charge. He's large and in charge. I so many times don't have any answers. I would love to be able to come up with an answer for why are professional people ask me. I'd love to be able to come up with questions in my own life, come up with answers to questions, but there's so many I can't. And I know it brings misery, but I'm still blessed and I thank God for it. Right now, I want you to put your hands up. Everybody, put your hands up. Here's what I want you to say. God, I believe you're still in charge. I believe you still have my best interest in heart. I believe your timing is always perfect. God, I know when I can't know your plan, when I can't see your hand, I can trust your heart. Because you're moving in my life and I trust you. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Y'all say this to me. God, I thank you for misery. 
Because it lets me know birth is on the way of something great. And I thank you for what you're about to do in my life. Now I'm going to praise you, God. Go ahead, y'all. Just praise him. Go ahead. One more time. God is awesome. All the time. All the time. Amen. Y'all, let's get ready. Remember, on the way out, sign your name up. Amen. On the way out, I threw that one in. That was a freebie. <laughs> when you go out today, remember, now when you start feeling kind of visible about things, just know that that's because God's getting ready to birth something something awesome. Amen. Something awesome. So just hang on. Amen. Brother Steve, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Father God, we just pray. We love you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestow on us daily. And Lord, help us through our trials and our tribulations, Lord, to know that you're our God and that your heart is looking at us, Lord, and that you're going to deliver us Bring us through it. And we just give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen and amen.